Let's get started on today's notes over evaluating algebraic expressions. And first, let's look at some vocabulary. So what is an algebraic expression? An algebraic expression includes both variables and constants together with at least one arithmetic or arithmetic operation. So let's look at this right here. 3x plus 5 equals 2x plus 7. Terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So we have a term that's 3x, a term of 5, a term of 2x, and a term of 7. So in this first term, we have a number in front of this letter, okay? And that letter is called a variable. So x is our variable. The number in front of the variable is the coefficient. So they're like butted up right next to each other. It's the number in front of the x or the variable. If you have a term that has no variable attached to it, that's called a constant. If I'm taking anything and I'm adding five every time, it's constant. I will add five every time. So when we look at this right here, 3x plus 5 equals 2x plus 7, we have two expressions in this equation. So this expression, 3x plus 5, we call that an algebraic expression because there's a variable in there. If there was no variable, only numbers, we would call it a numeric expression. On the right side of my equal sign, I have another algebraic expression. Because I have an equal sign here, the entire thing is an algebraic equation. So what's the difference between an expression and an equation? Well, an equation contains an equal sign. And then one thing I really want to point out here is we simplify expressions and we solve equations. We simplify expressions and solve equations. So keep in mind that if you're given just an expression, like 3x plus 5 or 3x plus 2x plus 5 minus 1, and you're asked to simplify it, you can't say x equals something, okay? The only time you're going to have x equals in your answer is when there is an equal sign in your problem, okay? So it's really important to note that. So we simplify expressions, we solve equations. However, today we can evaluate expressions, evaluate, solve, expressions when given the values of the variables. When given the values, not always multiple values, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, the value of the variables. Okay. So here's what I mean by that. We're going to be evaluating algebraic expressions today. And we're going to use the substitution property to evaluate algebraic expression given the value of the variables. And the substitution property of equality states that if x equals y, then x can be replaced for y in any expression or equation and vice versa. So let's look at this first little example. I'm going to walk you through it, and then we're going to do some examples together. So I have evaluate this expression right here, and I give you the value for x, the value for y, and the value for z. So the very first thing that you're going to do is replace the variables with parentheses. So the first thing, I replace this x with parentheses, this y with parentheses, and this z with parentheses. And I do that right here in this first step. The next step, we're going to substitute, or what's another word for substitute? Replace the value of the variable inside each set of parentheses. So if x equals 2, I'm going to put a 2 right here. If y equals negative 3, I'm going to put a negative 3 right here. And if z equals 5, I'm going to put a 5 right here. And then we're just going to simplify using the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply 3 times 2 to get 6, 2 times negative 3 to get negative 6, 
uh, negative 5 times 5 to get negative 25. If you want to simplify this right here, that's 6 minus 6 minus 25. 6 minus 6 is 0, which means our answer is negative 25. So that's just um, you know, a guided example. Let's do some more examples on the next page. Evaluate each expression using the given values of the variables. Show all work. 3a plus 5b, a equals 4, and b equals negative 3. So I'm going to follow my step 1, 2, and 3 from the pre previous page. And the first thing I'm going to do is replace my variables with parentheses. So I replaced a with parentheses, b with parentheses, and now inside those parentheses, I'm going to put what a equals. If a equals 4, anywhere I see a, I can replace it with 4. Here's b. If b equals negative 3, anywhere I see b, I can replace it with negative 3 because b equals negative 3. And then now I just solve this using the order of operations. So 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And note how I wrote that. Negative 15. That negative becomes my operation. And now I've just got 12 minus 15. And then if you remember your integer rules, that we've gone over. Positive 12 and negative 15, different signs subtract, take the sign of the larger number, then you'll be exact negative three. Let's move on to number two. This is what's really important with the whole, the first step of replacing your variables with parentheses, when you have this guy right here, this exponent. So x squared minus y squared. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace x with parentheses, but look where I put that squared. That stays, everything stays, except for the variable. Then inside those parentheses, I put what each variable equals. So let me change colors here. If x equals six, anywhere I see x, I can replace it with six. If y equals negative five, anywhere I see y, right there, I can replace it with negative five. And now let's simplify using our order of operations. So the first thing is, I know, PEMDAS, I have to do exponents before I do this subtraction. So what is six squared? 36, and then I need to square negative five. When it, negative five is inside the parentheses, that's negative five times negative five, which is positive 25. That is very different from negative five squared. In this case, if I were following my order of operations, I would have to square the five, because this is essentially right here, negative one, negative one times five squared. So I would have to square the five, which would be 25, and then negative one times 25 is negative 25. So that's the difference between having this negative five inside the parentheses versus outside the parentheses. That's how you interpret each one. So negative five squared like that is positive 25. So I've got 36 minus positive 25, because don't forget, there's my minus sign. So 36 minus 25, what is that? It's 11. Okay, let's move on to number three. Okay, more variables, a little bit longer of a problem. So I have negative AB squared plus negative two times C cubed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace every variable with parentheses. So I have a negative out in front, it stays there. I'm replacing a with parentheses times b squared see how i did that plus okay so let's watch this open parentheses negative 2 times c cubed so watch how i do this times c cubed well here's c that i'm replacing with parentheses there's my cubed and now i'm closing that big set of parentheses because i have this open set i need to close it right here okay so now, what do I put inside each set of parentheses? I put the value of the variable. So if a equals negative 3 anywhere I see a, I can replace it with negative 3. b is negative 1. Anywhere I see b, I can replace it with negative 1. c is negative 2. Anywhere I see c, I can replace it with negative 2. And now we're just going to simplify using our order of operations. So this is essentially negative 1 times negative three, however you want to look at it, minus a negative, that's positive three, 
negative 1 squared, well remember that's negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. 3 times 1 plus, let's open parentheses here, negative 2 times, what is negative 2 cubed? That's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. Okay, and now let's do the next step. So 3 times 1 is 3, because I need to multiply it before I do this adding right here. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. 3 plus 16 is 19. Okay, let's move on to number 4. Uh-oh, I have a variable that's a fraction. Okay, that's okay. We're not scared of fractions. m squared plus mn squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace this variable with parentheses. So m squared plus, okay, what is this going to look like? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do m times n, that little dot there. So it's not like all these parentheses and super confusing. So... Right here is m, and m equals 6. What do I replace m with? 6. In here, I have m times n. Well, m equals 6, so I'm going to put that here. And n is 2 thirds, 2 over 3. So now let's do our next step in our order of operations. So I have this plus sign right here, which means I know I'm going to need to simplify all of that on the left side of my plus sign and all of this on the right side of my plus sign, and then we'll add those two numbers together. So 6 squared is 36 plus, what is 6 times 2 thirds? You could do 6 over 1 times 2 over 3. Some of you might be able to do this in your head. Cross simplify or pre-simplify. It's just a made up term that I give it. 3 and 6 both have a common factor and that's 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now I'm just multiplying fractions, ain't no problem, it's the top times the top, which is 4, and the bottom times the bottom, which is 1. So 6 times 2 thirds, or 2 thirds of 6, is just 4. And now I need to simplify 4 squared. What is 4 squared? 16, and now 36 plus 16 is 52. Okay, let's move on to number 5. Number five, x squared minus y squared over x plus y plus c. Okay, so in my numerator, x squared plus y squared over x plus y plus z. Okay, inside each of those parentheses, I'm going to put the value of the variable. So if x is negative 1, anywhere I see x, I can replace it with negative 1 right there. And right there. Okay, y is 5. Anywhere I see y, right there and right there, I can replace it with 5. And then z is negative 2. I see z right there, so I'm going to replace this with negative 2. And now let's simplify using our order of operations. So let's look at our numerator first. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 5 squared is 25. I'm sorry, you know what I did? I wrote a plus sign right here, and that is not a plus sign. That should not be a plus. I was just making sure you were focused, paying attention. That should be 1 minus 25. 1 minus 25 over negative 1 plus 5 plus negative 2 or minus 2 is what? Positive 2. So 1 minus 25 different sign, subtract, take the sign of the larger number, negative 24 divided by 2 is what? Negative 12. And now let's move on to our last problem. Last and probably most difficult example. Okay, number 6. c squared plus 3 times the absolute value of d minus 4b squared. So let's review absolute value. What's the absolute value of 2? It's 2. What's the absolute value of negative 2? Also 2. Absolute value is always positive. So the first thing we're going to do is replace each variable with parentheses. So c squared plus 3 
plus 3 times the absolute value of D. So instead of replacing this with parentheses, what is the absolute value of D? Well, if D is negative 4, then the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So I'm going to write it like this. There we go. Minus 4 times B squared. So you see what I did there? I just went ahead and replaced what is the absolute value of D. It's not just D. It's the absolute value of D. So now let's go through and replace each set of parentheses with the value of the variable. So C squared. Well, C is 3. Anywhere I see C, right here, I can replace it with 3. We already did the absolute value of D, and then now we have B. B is negative 3, and I've got that right there. And now let's do our next step. So we need to obviously do all of our multiplication and exponents before we do any adding or subtracting. So 3 squared is 9. 3 times 4 is 12 minus, let's do 4 times, what is negative 3 squared? Positive 9. So I'm going to rewrite that by go ahead and doing 9 plus 12, which is what? 21 minus, what is 4 times 9? 36. 21 minus 36 is negative 15. And that concludes your notes over evaluating algebraic expressions. I hope it was helpful.